the dang Wonder Boy game making this game harder to open? Sort of, just by association. You know what? Ah, uh, you know what it probably is. I don't know. I don't know how I didn't think about this beforehand. The boat is orange, and um. Well, okay. I'm realizing now that this doesn't make much sense because that still would have been, at least as far as we could tell, the start of the. Uh, a good start for the uh, the puzzle the puzzle here and uh, uh, this is a really wacky one I'm honestly not I'm, I'm not too sure of it myself I guess it could be something from like up up here up on this rock maybe you know but it's like it's still the kind of thing that doesn't really line up unless you're around here like again right where this couch is it would be the perfect place for these to line up, pretty much. And you're still missing out on a a freaking little sliver. Just a little sliver. If it was ever sunset here, you could probably do this entire puzzle. Because the the beautiful, big beautiful sunset would be reflecting on this on this wonderful waterfront here. Um, but unfortunately that's not the case. If I could pick up this darn pillow That'd be also kind of nice, because then I could use it as that sliver, but I think for now I'm just going to have to cut my losses and leave. And, um... You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? It's going to be another video episode. We're going to go find that video area again, and I'm going to put in that one code that I kind of remember. Um, and that's not just me basically admitting that I cheated. I swear. It... I actually do... I actually do kind of remember it. Um, I guess uh, ultimately we shall see whether or not I I do actually remember it. I probably uh, remember a little bit, right? Where's the city again? There it is. Wow. And there's a way in from there, if I remember correctly. Which I do. Okay. It's like um, it's somewhere. No, I do remember. It's like a crack in the frickin' wall. Ugh, God. This place. This place, it, it gets to me sometimes. I'm gonna find it. It's in this courtyard. Yeah, there it is. Okay, 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 okay. Down, down again. Eventually, I will have, like, a really good sense of where I am when I do these things, but, uh... I don't see why I would actually even try to gain that sense now. I'm pretty much at the end of the game. Okay, 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 it was... Actually, I think I might be able to do it from here. Like, excluding the, uh... The bottom section. Was it like this? I think it might have been like this. No, not quite. I think it was something like this, though, right? Or maybe it was, uh, starting from here? I just remember that it was like that. But it would have made a sound if that was right, I think. Right? Right? It would have said something, right? I, I, I don't... I feel like I would have remembered if it was something like this. You know? And it also would have said something. Right? It would have said something, right? So maybe like that? No? Well, come on, man. Is there another, um... Also, there are a lot more of these than I figured there would have been. There's like six of these. I might just wait till I find another one and then... Suddenly remember what it looks like. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, uh, I was about to say I hate to say it that way, but actually, no, no, I don't. I don't hate to say it that way at all. Uh, it could be... This kind of no, not quite. I'm really straining my brain here as to what it could be like. Um, so I, all I really remember was that it was this pattern, this kind of pattern, and um, 
Hey. Not much else really comes to mind. I guess what it could have been, what it could have been is, um, something more like this. Did I already try that? I feel like I might have... I just might have... Might have already tried it. Already, might have already tried you. Definitely already tried that one. Okay, cool. Um, change of plans, boys. Crap. Jeez, what was it? Because it was, it was definitely something like this. Like, um... But I, I could have sworn it was, like, all the way around. Like, uh... I don't think I've tried excluding these two yet. So... Like, uh... uh it still doesn't look... I guess I could go into this one, right? Oh my gosh! Is he just blinking into the camera? Are we gonna... Is he gonna say something? Wouldn't it be funny if it was just like a five minute video of this guy blinking into the camera? Don't tell me he's doing like Morse code or something. Okay, cool. Someone was coughing. This better not be like footage from a wake or something. I'd feel real bad about the whole like, Oh, he's just blinking into the camera deal. You know? You know yourself as the open, empty, luminous presence of awareness. Hmm? That sounds exactly like somebody, something that somebody that just spent like open a full minute blinking because would say. You say yes unconditionally and indiscriminately to all appearances of the mind, body, and world. Like uh. empty oh. space. Okay. You have no mechanism inherent within you that can resist any appearance. We don't have to make this the case. It is already the case. I feel like... Oh, uh, jeez. This is, this is the Empty. part where I start to be really appreciative of, like, because the legal reasoning way, because it's so based on defining every little thing right at the start. Aware presence a lot of this is either ridiculous or entirely reasonable depending on how we're defining the terms he's using and we're not even not made like i don't even know how far in we are here or a perception it is made out of pure knowing or awareness we're not that far in guys this might be the whole episode sorry <laughs> I might shut up a bit, but I think I'm still going to provide commentary as to what's going on, or on and what this guy's talking about. Because just like the sun, relatively speaking, that renders all objects seeable. Yes, that it does. So you, I, this open, empty presence renders all experience knowable. I don't remember what his explanation for no or empty was. And I feel In like fact, it's a very human centric we view don't of the really whole see deal, objects, you know? relatively speaking. It's like saying um, by the sun we just see reflection. We make human knowledge possible. Of the sun's because light. without humanity there would be no human knowledge. Appearing as a multiplicity. No way, right? Diversity of color. 
In the same way, oh boy, we don't really know said. the objects of the mind, body, and the world. We just know our knowing of them. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, all we know, that makes sense. All that is known is the knowing of experience. And you are that knowing. Okay. I think I am getting what he's talking about now, pretty much. All that is ever known is a modulation of our own knowing presence, modulating itself in the, in the form of thinking, sensing, and perceiving, and seeming to become a mind, a body, and a world. But we never actually know a mind, a body, and a world as they are normally conceived. We just know our knowing of them. I can't tell if this is going this to be some kind of anti-religious meaning or a fully holy religious meaning. <laughs> I can see it going both ways very quickly. I don't. I don't. Uh, I guess. I suppose it could have nothing to do with religion, but I feel like a lot of the knows nothing other than a lot of the content within this game ends up having some pertinence in religion. Knowingly, this open, empty, luminous presence of awareness. We don't need to do anything special to make this happen. Above all, we don't have to manipulate the mind in any way whatsoever to be this presence of awareness. Um, okay. In that case, this what's the point? Which is simply our self. I suppose it what could just be a... Say, I is ever present. Be aware of this. But am I not aware? <laughs> uh... You've made me aware already, in which case, Just check why this. go further, I suppose. In your own experience, nothing that I am saying this evening, there is nothing that cannot be checked in your own direct experience right now. I bring no special knowledge to this meeting. I don't have a store of knowledge which I am disseminating. I'm just within the limits of language, t trying to describe the current experience. In his own words, he has thought. devalued his own speech. Do I know anything other than now? I would hope so. Your mind stores knowledge to some degree. I suppose you could say that that storage is in the now, but um, Try it's of past events. The not now. Try first to experience... He's going to say that our perception the of the past is in the present, and therefore it is in part the present. Or something it's like that. It's easy to experience a thought about the past. Okay, or that. But what about that the also... actual past to which this thought refers? Uh, Try to experience that. Yeah, Recall re recollection of memory and actually fully experiencing the past. I don't think anybody actually past, says that that's the case. You know. into the past. Or one second into the future. We are constantly stepping one Thought step into the future. It just takes a second to get there. But what about <laughs> you? Uh, I suppose it's just the devil's when advocate in me that to tries to make an to argument to consider pretty much. Interesting philosophical conversation, but it, it is actually enough. your experience that the past and the future are never experienced. Well, they are experienced in the case of it being past tense. You don't experience and them the past the so much as you have experienced, experienced them. them. They are only thought about. And that thought about the past and the future is always now. I knew it. I knew he was going to get there. I called it. About time. I uh, know, he's going to say time is based on perception. Time is a movement between a non-existent past towards a non-existent future. It's a theory, a necessary... And I always find a lot of this 
Uh, like, it's not that I don't understand a lot of the uh, relativistic time stuff so much as, from the standpoint, like, in an engineering standpoint, it becomes somewhat impractical to think of it as more than how we experience it to begin with, or anything different from the way we typically experience it, in the same way that, like, words gain colloquial meanings. It's not... It, it isn't uh, beneficial or really productive for anybody to think about time as uh, really um, time is entirely relative and it's based on our own perception of it. Plane from London you know, to it's like in Washington DC uh, last weekend before coming here. The past is far behind us. The future doesn't exist. The friend who picked me up asked me how the flight was, and she said, "How long did it take?" <laughs> No time at all. And I experienced thought being cranked up like an old motor, a little resistant to get going. And for a moment, I could feel the cogs of thought almost moving. One thing interesting with plane out. rides, maybe and this I is because I don't really do the in-flight entertainment stuff. Um, because in my experience, it had been now all the way. I suppose, yeah. Um, I had never left London. London had left me. It's a very self-centric view of space-time, which is fine because your perceptions are centered on yourself. They are your the perceptions. Abstracts um, and calls a body in an aeroplane, flowed through me, uh -huh. and I never arrived in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. arrived in me, or at least the cluster of perceptions that thought calls Washington. And yet, if you were to describe the event, you would say that you got onto a plane and it took about, what, like in the eight hours for the plane to fly all the way to Washington? Into this room. And nobody is Which even that plane. isn't a and full is extent of the case, case, because for one, the time difference between London and a Washington D.C. How much you, the plane, is actually moving with reference to the rest of the universe or whatever the solar system even. Since but at that point, let me think about which direction the Earth spins. Uh, if the sun rises now, in the east, place, that means that the Earth now, is spinning. Here, this dimensionless. Uh, now this timeless counterclockwise presence All right. of our own being. So in that case that is our experience. Whether we people have talked before about like, you know, you could just get in a big balloon and take it up to the top of the atmosphere where you're not uh, affected by currents and then wait and then go down where the Never earth has spun a little bit. When it hears this. It's not exactly feasible, but in that case uh, you could be yes. in a state where true. the plane and the ground are moving at the same speed. An undeniable continuity. But I guess, in terms of a, with reference to a point that's and this immediately between the plane and the ground, that is always the case. Would seem to be I guess. Of time. Well, anyways, what's this guy been talking about for the past minute or so? Where does this felt sense of continuity? Come from. Uh, the way that we catalog experiences as something of a straight line. The mind is the current thought or image. And thoughts and images are intermittent. And yet we can infer things about the past based on the body stored thought. Is known through sensation. Yeah. And all sensations are intermittent. All we know of the world is perception, that is, sights, sounds, tastes textures, and smells. In fact, nobody has ever experienced a world as such, a world as it is normally conceived to be. We just know the current perception. And all perception is intermittent. Okay. So if the so-called mind, body, and world are intermittent, from where does this felt sense of continuity come from. It comes from the only thing 
if we can call it a thing that is truly continuous, or in fact not continuous, but ever-present now in our experience, and that is our own being, the presence of awareness. All right. The presence of awareness is the only thing that is known to be ever-present. Huh. Now the mind knows nothing. Well, with of reference to one's lifespan, I suppose. Only knows apparent objects. So when the mind looks at experience to find what it is that accounts for continuity, it cannot see awareness. And so it manufactures a substance called time to account for the continuity of experience. Okay. In other words, Continuity in time is what eternity looks like when viewed through the narrow slit of the mind. Okay. Permanence in space is what the infinite, unlimited nature of awareness looks like when viewed through the narrow slit of the mind. Continuity and permanence are pale reflections at the level of the mind of the true, eternal, and infinite nature of awareness, that is, of our self. The concept of self, I hope he means, which I guess is kind of the only reasonable way of understanding it, I think. I don't know. Is he going to say something else? <laughs> mm. What else can we say about ourself from our actual experience? Which means, right now, what can we know for certain about ourself? Not what thought may tell us about ourself, but what we actually know in this moment, derived only from our experience of ourself. Didn't yourself, we say not too long can ago? I, this open, empty, um, knowing presence. State that uh, can I the recollection of experiences agitated? is something that happens in the now. Thought can be agitated. Sensations of the body can be agitated. The world. <laughs> can be agitated. But what about you, the one that knows the apparent mind, body, and world? Can you, this open, empty presence, be agitated? I gotta say, it's a good thing I decided to devote an entire episode to this. I don't even know if I'm gonna have anything to say after this is done, to be honest. See, in your experience right now, that you are and this, of course, is just an image, I like an open, empty space, such as the space of this room. Nothing that appears within this room can agitate it. We are all sitting peacefully now, but if we were to stand up and start dancing or fighting, would the space of this room become agitated? Mm, you, in a manner of speaking, I suppose. I like that. You, I, the presence of awareness, are undisturbable. I guess not. Imperturbable. It's again, to I, I, it, it would depend on the definition. Undisturbability he can, of ourselves you can speak in a lot of ways upon the condition of the mind. As long as the correctness right now, of what you're saying relies you, on the definition of the words you use. Awareness are utterly imperturbable and for this reason another name Ourself is peace. I'm peace not so not sure. The quality that ourself has, it is what ourself is. Not peace of mind. Minds are more or less agitated. This peace that passeth understanding, that is not of the mind. Okay, religious illusions. 
It doesn't have Illusion. to be thought. Starting with an A, it's not hiding in the background of experience. This very awareness that is seeing, hearing, mm -hmm. knowing, is pure peace itself, shining in all experience. However, apparently agitated that experience may be. Is this going to culminate in we are aspects of the living so God? Can I, I feel like that could, that could be the case. <laughs> ever lack something? In a manner of speaking, yes. Thoughts can say that something is missing. Feelings can say that something is missing. But what about you? Yeah, I could decide that nothing's missing in my life, but eventually I would get hungry. Unless that's not what we mean. Without referring to thought or feeling, is there the slightest motive in you to avoid the now and replace it with the not now? No. See that in yourself, this presence of awareness, there is not the slightest impulse or possibility to avoid the now. And what do we call this absolute absence of resistance to the now? Inevitable. The absolute absence of resisting what is and seeking what is not. What is the common name we give to this? Uh, ephemerality. Happiness. Oh, I see. Living in the now. I see. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. We Contention. Know I can. I can see that definition. By definition, not resisting the now. And seeking okay. I, I see where this is going now. In this the is a. Uh, the future. This is fine. <laughs> happiness. Of course, I do not mean a pleasant state of the mind or the body. I mean this absolute impossibility of ourself ever to resist or seek to resist what is and to seek what is not which would culminate and make itself known by so happiness like peace is such another name things as you are not ourself. talking about apparently it is not a quality that ourself has it is what ourself is Um, mm. What else can we say for certain based on this current experience about ourselves? I'm having a little bit of trouble with this guy, just a little bit. But I have relatively cemented views about man. <laughs> uh, they're not very good. <laughs> or being driven here. The day before yesterday, I, I am hesitant to give much credence to anything Francisco, that I was looking ultimately would paint in the uh, natural the man as something good. The passenger seat, and I noticed. Perhaps that says a lot about me, but the words inscribed at the bottom of the wing mirror, um, and they said, "Objects in the mirror are closer than you think." statement yeah. of pure non-duality yeah objects that appear in the mirror of consciousness are closer than we think uh, how close to a mirror uh, are the objects that appear in it depends on the mirror if there's any kind of focal length are there in fact two things? One, the objects that appear in the mirror, and two, the mirror? Um, or is it yeah. all just mirror? Well, mm, I, I guess you could just call it the mirror since we don't exactly we refer to... Uh, mind is the experience of thinking. 
like in the same way that light bounces off you, um, light just bounces off the mirror. You could say that the color of the mirror is dependent on what is in front of it. Ultimately, the mirror just looks like whatever's in front of it. modulation of yourself, awareness. All we know of the apparent world is the experience of seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling. These are all modulations of knowing, modulations of ourself. Wacky. In other words, we never truly know a mind or a body or a world. These labels are just abstractions that thought superimposes on the intimacy of our experience. From the point of view of experience, which is the only real point of view, experience is much closer, much more intimate, so close as to not admit the possibility of two things, one, myself, awareness, and two, the object that I know. Even that is an abstraction it may be a useful stepping stone, a halfway understanding to conceive of thoughts, sensations, and perceptions arising in awareness. But nothing arises in awareness. The only substance of all experience, the only substance of thinking, sensing, and perceiving is already awareness. Okay. What do we call this absolute absence of two things? A subject that knows and an object that is known. <coughs> Take now the experience of hearing. Go to the sound of the air conditioning. Forget about the label sound and air conditioning. Our only knowledge of the apparent air conditioning is the experience of hearing. Or the absence of How close does hearing take place? Atmospheric discomfort. You? Five meters away? Ten it's been meters taking away. a drink of water, by the way. Refer only to your experience, not to what thought tells you about sound. Where is hearing? Somewhere inside our ear. Suppose. Is it close? Intimate? Sure. Why not? And in the experience of hearing, can you find two parts? One part that hears, and another part that is heard? Or is it just one seamless, intimate substance? We're almost there, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you can refer to objects outside of the self as the self. I'm not sure how much I could uh, well, get on board with that. <laughs> Thought says, I, the inside self in here, sees the room, the outside world out there. Yeah. But what does experience say? All we know of the apparent room is the experience of seeing. Yes. Remove seeing, and the room vanishes. In other words, you could still run into the wall, the though. I suppose you, you wouldn't know, know it. This is the deal. Okay. Does seeing take place five, ten, fifteen meters? A room away is something yourself? of an abject, abstract concept, anyway. It's in an enclosed space, and even then, it doesn't really need to be all that enclosed. So. And can you find two parts knowing to the experience a room. of seeing? One part uh, to see, right. and another part that is seen. Or is it just one seamless, intimate substance? Uh, and what I is guess. the name, the common name? we give to the absolute oh boy. of all experience. Oh boy. It is called love. Mm. 
love is the most familiar experience that we all know, the collapse or dissolution of the sense of a self in here and an object I suppose. The world out there. Oh boy. The collapse. I really do feel like this is separateness. Very slowly devolving into uh, otherness, not me ness. Man shapes reality by love. perception. Something of that nature. Um but this might just love be my own misconceptions. The non duality because of uh, if we call it non duality the kind of things I've heard before. There's just a few thousand of us in the world that are interested in it. Yeah. But if we call it love, or peace, or happiness, Not then all I seven suppose. billion of us Like are oneness? In it. Unity, I suppose? Um, hmm. So why is it, if love, peace, happiness, are the natural condition of all experience, the substance out of which all experience is made, how is it that it seems not to be experienced? If you enter a room that has a pool it's in it, and the single thought temperature of the water and the temperature of the air the are the same exact temperature, of awareness, and the water is still which the same way that the air in the room is still, awareness shares the you don't have the same kind of awareness of entering this pool of water as of you would if they were different temperatures of different states. And sensations that appear within it. The problem with having like the natural state of anything be goodness the of the objects that appear is that it makes goodness the with zero point. Alone, and you can only get more negative from there. It makes goodness to be a thing that is no longer really worthy of laud. To acquire or take on the apparent limits of the body and the mind. Just as there's some degree of naivety in it, I would argue. Seems it offers no explanation the for the kinds of evils that can be image. seen on the more visceral and as a result vile of this level. Imaginary collapse or contraction of our self, unlimited, eternal awareness into a body and a mind. These qualities of love, peace, and happiness are seemingly veiled. And it is for this reason that the self, the separate self that thought imagines us to be, is always, by definition, on a search in the imaginary outside world for the apparently lost... I always love making long-ass videos. I should have split this in half. I wouldn't have been able to, though. Jeez. However, this imaginary inside self cannot, by definition, find the love that it seeks. Because its very presence, its apparent presence, is the veiling of that love. Hmm, okay. I was about to say I thought that the self was All the love the itself, but... The imaginary the self, the, separate self the perception of the self, I suppose. That searches, it is the activity of resisting the now and seeking the not now. Oh, All this okay. seeking ever wants is love. But love is the dissolution of this seeking, the dissolution of this imaginary self. In other words, the separate self that seeks love is like a moth that seeks a flame. The flame is all the moth wants, but it is the only thing it cannot have. Because as the moth touches the flame, it dies. That is its way of knowing the flame. It becomes the flame as it touches it. 
that is the separate self's way of finding love by dying in it. The death or dissolution of the separate self is the experience of love. Okay. Keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. No. <laughs> Uh, I'm really glad I didn't decide so to be a philosopher. Simply be knowingly this open, empty, luminous presence of awareness whose nature, whose inherent nature is love, peace, and happiness. Not a love, peace, and happiness that is in the background of experience that has to be sought, but that is shining uh. in full view at the heart of all experience. In fact, experience is made out of this substance called peace or happiness. Um. Uh. Okay. Another thing I'm not too sure on. <laughs> is he crying? Or is he just blinking again? Of course, a guy like this got brown eyes. He looks like Mark Ruffalo. Sounds like him, too. They should have gotten this guy to play the Hulk. It would have been so much better. You heard me. Frick you, Ruffalo. Anyways, please tell me the end of this is actually just another minute and a half of him blinking at the camera. Going out how he came in. It actually was. Oh my gosh. I, I'm, I don't know what to think about that, if I'm being honest. That is uh, really something. I never opened this. Where does this lead? I don't remember. Ah, God. You know? Okay, okay. Should be under my feet right now. Don't think about my feet, alright? You're thinking about my feet, aren't you? Oh, disgusting. You're gross. Where am I going? Okay, here I am. Here I am, Mama. Yeah, I, I know. Hey, hey, this place. Anyways, I feel like eventually I ought to find out where that, that frickin', was that a deer? No, okay, that was literally trees. I know, man, referencing Bambi made me think of deer, sorry. There's gotta be something over here, you know, something that opens up. But it might just be the top of the, okay, never mind. Yeah, let's just, does that, these are connected. For some reason. Huh. I guess it just, uh... Bounces off something over there for the sake of directness? I mean, it looks like it could have had a direct line up there anyway. That's wacky. Alright. Whatever. We're gonna... We're gonna... I'm gonna make my way to the top of that freaking mountain. And we're gonna do it, I guess, primarily on the next episode because... Let's face facts, this is a 44 minute episode as is. And I'm, I'm not cutting it down. I can't. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun, right? That's going to be fun. We'll get there. I, uh, ah, God, I mean, I hate to say that a lot of that ended up being kind of in one ear and out the other, but I'm just, it, it was all said in a matter of fact kind of way in, in the manner that one speaks like facts of basic math that ultimately if you don't fully not only not 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 only understand but like fully buy into what he's talking about it it's it becomes akin to gibberish in my mind you know um but uh i think i kind of get it 
pretty much. Like, I have some understanding of what he was talking about. Maybe not good enough that I could, like, provide really commentary that it is understandable and also of similar level, you know? Am I missing something here? I think I might be... Oh, I am not missing anything here! We're opening this box on the next episode. Till then, like, on, and subscribe, or I will stop perceiving you, and you will no longer exist. Yeah, just kidding. I never see any of you anyways. Goodbye! Yeah, I hope that one. I thought it was pretty funny.